thank you. Um, so let's start by recalling a uh, structure of a Firestone network. So this is a uh, A-round Firestone network, and uh, each wire, uh, the wire length is n, and we will use xi to represent uh, the intermediate values. So each value si is n bit long, and they uh, satisfy this relationship here. Uh, okay, and we will call fi a round function. Now recall that uh, a fi each round is a permutation, uh, no matter whether the round function is or is not a permutation. And the Firestone uh, network is a 2 n bit permutation with input x0, x1, and output xa, x9. And in this talk, we will assume the round functions are independent random functions. And the question is, to what extent is such a network like a random permutation? So let's take a look at uh, the classic indistinguishability experiment. We have a distinguisher, and it's interacting with one of the two worlds. It's uh, advantage is defined as the difference of the distinguisher outputting one in the two, two worlds. In, and we assume the distinguisher is information theoretic, meaning that it has unbounded computational power. It just has a limited number of queries to its oracles. In the real world, it interacts with uh, the Firestone network. And in the ideal world, it interacts with a random permutation. And in both worlds, it has uh, two side uh, queries to the, the oracle, so it can query backwards. Uh, the seminal Ruby Rakoff uh, theorem says uh, four round Firestone network is, is indistinguishable from a random permutation. So the advantage is negligible for any distinguisher. Uh, but in this talk, we will uh, use a stronger notion. Uh, in differentiability introduced by Maurer, Renner, and Hollenstein in 2004. So in this case, well, we give the distinguisher uh, access to the round functions. So you can query these uh, small round functions as well in the real world. However, in the ideal world, there is no round function. So we will have to construct a simulator that will uh, behave, uh, try to behave like the round functions so that a distinguisher cannot distinguish between the two worlds. And we require the simulator to be efficient, and it has oracle access to P. Uh, so our goal is to construct the simulator. And indifferentiability means uh, for so many rounds and with such a simulator, no distinguisher can distinguish using so many queries. Uh, so. Uh, also, we require its uh, advantage in the two worlds to be negligible. So uh, the first work uh, on differentiability of Python networks is done by Cor uh, Coron, Catherine, yes. and Saran by, uh, in 2008. So they proved that five round Fisto is not indifferentiable. And they also proved six round is indifferentiable from a random permutation. Uh, then uh, in 2009, uh, Saran uh, gave a simple 10 round simulator in his uh, PhD thesis. Uh, so, uh, however, uh, in two, uh, 2011, uh, Hollenstein, Kunzler, and Tassaro uh, found some flaw in the previous proofs, and they uh, showed a 14 round FISTO is, is indifferentiable. Therefore, uh, whether 10 round FISTO is indifferentiable remains uh, open at this point. Uh, so concurrent and dependent of our work, uh, Darkman, so uh, Kat, and Tiru Vengelen uh, proved that 10 round Fisto is indifferentiable and uh, disappeared in this year's Eurocrypt. So our result uh, is 8 round Fisto is indifferentiable. So uh, we will first uh, give a natural and simple 10 round simulator. And from this simulator, we will uh, obtain an eight-round simulator, which is also uh, natural and simple. Um, no, not that simple, actually. Uh, so, the, so this is uh, our, the comparison of our results. Uh, 
So we achieved slightly better security than the previous work, but it's still a very enormous advantage for the distinguisher, so not very good bounds. And oh, and Q is the number of queries of the distinguisher, and N is the wire length. Okay, and now let's recall the indifferentiability uh, experiment. So uh, the question here is, what can the distinguisher do to distinguish between these two worlds? Uh, as we can see in the real world, the round functions must be consistent with the permutation in the Feistel sense. Therefore, uh, the distinguisher can, well, you can like choose x0 and x1 and make query all the way to obtain x8 and x9. And we will call this a path. So a path consists of x0 through x9, these uh, 10 values. And you can check if the path is consistent with the permutation uh, like this. And it can also start from uh, other positions, like from the back and all the way to front, or start from the middle and to both sides. And it can also go around, so it can query through to F1 and make the permutation query going to X, X, X9 and then go uh, to, X, uh, to obtain X5 and see if the value of F5, X5 is um, consistent. Well, there are uh, a lot of ways to complete a path. And moreover, it can do something more tricky, uh, like uh, it can use the same query in different path, and it can also interleave uh, queries in different path to confuse <laughs> the simulator. And so what can the simulator do? Uh, the basic strategy is uh, lazy sampling and preemptive uh, path completion. So how to complete a path? Uh, uh, suppose it, uh, the simulator decides to complete this path. Uh, so it, the green queries are already defined, and the white ones are not. So uh, the simulator can lazy sample some of the queries. Uh, by lazy sample, we mean uh, it chooses a uh, random value for the query. So it's randomly selected from all n bit strings. And however, at this point, uh, the remaining two queries cannot be sampled anymore because uh, the values are actually fixed by the other queries in the path. And generally, in each path, two queries have to be adapted regardless of uh, how the other queries are defined. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, so the simulator has to complete the path uh, early enough so that it has, still has uh, room to adapt uh, because you cannot adapt uh, a query that has already been defined. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you choose to complete, a path, complete too many paths, uh, since when you are completing a path, you will make more queries. And this may create an out of control chain reaction and the simulator may never terminate. Uh, and so the box in the previous simulators lies in the first, uh, first condition. So it has no uh, room to adapt. We will see it later. So uh, by adapting a path, we mean uh, assigning these two queries the values like this, so, so that it can uh, be consistent with the permutation. Mm. Okay, uh, so now uh, we start by introducing Swan's 10-round simulator, which is the basis of all the subsequent uh, simulators. So uh, his simulator preemptively completes a path when one of the two detect zones become filled. So it has uh, a middle detect zone, which consists of only two rounds, meaning that uh, for every pair of X F5 and F6, uh, every pair of queries to these two rounds, a path should be completed. And it also has uh, an outer detect zone consisting of four rounds. So uh, it's for every quadruple of queries to these four rounds that are con compatible with the permutation. So not for all quadruple, but only for a small set of them, a path should be completed. And uh, the position to adapt, recall that we have to adapt two queries in each path. The position to adapt uh, depends on the last query that, that fills a detect zone. Uh, and we say the query triggers the detect zone. So uh, if a path is triggered at x2 or x5, it will be adapted here. 
and if it's triggered at F6 or F9, it, it's adapted here. Uh, moreover, if multiple paths are triggered, uh, they will be completed in a FIFO order. So the path detected first will be completed first. Uh, so let's demonstrate using an example. So say a query is issued here that triggers uh, the outer detect zone of this path. And first, the query will be lazy sampled. It's given a random value. And we will adapt here. So we will need to sample the other undefined queries in this path. So these four queries will be lazy sampled. And moreover, uh, the queries to F5 and F6 are in the middle detect zone. So these two queries will trigger more paths. And these triggered paths are in queued and will be dealt with uh, later. And so after this path is completed, uh, the simulator decues the next path in the queue and starts completing the path. So the uh, OK, so this is a uh, Sans 10 round simulator. And its problem is there is a strategy for the simulator that uh, causes the, oh, sorry, there is a strategy for the distinguisher that causes the simulator to always uh, adapt some uh, already defined query. Uh, so this is Sans attack against his own simulator, uh, which is uh, quite complicated. But uh, the idea is to, uh, so, uh, the randomness that depend, uh, def um, determines this adapted query is sampled uh, a long time ago uh, before the query is actually sampled. Uh, the, the query is adapted. Uh, therefore, uh, some other path has already used the same randomness and defined this query before. So that's the problem, basically. And so how to fix the simulator? Uh, Holenstein et al. Uh, did this by adding buffer rounds uh, around each adapt zone. And moreover, they proved that uh, the buffer rounds are, adapt, uh, are sampled right before the adaptation occurs. Uh, so uh, as you can see, if these two values are newly sampled, uh, the values of x4 and x5 uh, will be uh, independently random. And therefore, uh, they are very unlikely to uh, collide with some existing query. So we will use the same idea here, but instead of adding new rounds, uh, we will just use existing rounds as the buffer. And uh, if the left adapt zone is used, we will call these two rounds the endpoints. And if the right adapt zone is used, uh, we call these two rounds the endpoints. So they are the rounds uh, around the adapt zone. And our goal is to keep endpoints unsampled until the path is ready to be adapted. So it's the same as uh, Hollenstein's idea. And um, so uh, in other words, we will require these four queries to remain unsampled until the path is completed. OK, uh, so how to achieve this goal? We will use the same example as before. So uh, when this query is issued, uh, we note that uh, the triggering query of a path is always one of the endpoint queries. So uh, since this query is an endpoint query and the other endpoint query is unknown, we cannot complete this path yet. So instead of lazy sampling one, uh, uh, the triggering query, we can only mark it uh, as pending and not sample it. And then we, we can issue these three queries. And these queries will be uh, answered using the simulator's own interface, just like uh, a normal query from the distinguisher. And so uh, again, the query to F6 is in the middle detect zone, so it may trigger other paths. And since uh, this query is an endpoint query of this newly triggered path, and our goal should be uh, achieved also for this new path, so the query to F6 cannot be sampled until the new path is completed. And, but the old path cannot continue until uh, the query to F6 is defined. Therefore, the new path should be completed before the old one. And this resulting uh, in a LIFO order. So the path detected later is actually uh, completed first. Uh, so this is the, maybe the only uh, difference between 
the two simulators. So uh, after this query is defined, we have the other endpoint query. And this query is marked pending as well. And we say the path is ready when both endpoint queries are pending. So this path is ready to be completed. But why don't we complete it, uh, I mean, right away? Uh, so you may have seen this. Uh, the, a query can be the endpoint query of uh, multiple paths. And since our goal should be kept for all these paths, uh, these two paths should be if, uh, adapted at the same time after the query F x5 is defined. Uh, so this is the batch adaptation idea from uh, a work from Dodis, uh, Leo, Stem, and Steinberger. Uh, so uh, the path that share an endpoint query should be uh, adapted at the same time. That's, uh, so that's the idea. And this, uh, so the, uh, all these paths will form a very nice tree structure. And uh, this will make our proof uh, much easier. And so uh, this is a summary of our 10 round simulator. It has the same simple structure as the Hans simulator. But we changed the completion order to LIFO and we delay the lazy sampling to ensure the freshness of the randomness. And note that this is only a conceptual change, because one way or another, the endpoint queries are sampled randomly. Uh, but as we have seen in the example, this uh, conceptual change actually leads us to uh, the LIFO order of path completion. OK, and uh, since we have the same structure as the Hans simulator, we can use the exact same termination argument. So uh, the outer detect zone cannot be, uh, well, it's very unlikely to be triggered unless the distinguisher has uh, queried the permutation query. And so the number, uh, the number of uh, paths triggered by the outer detect zone is at most Q in most executions. And uh, the number of queries in these two rounds uh, are not increased by path uh, triggered by the middle detect zone. So they are only increased by either a distinguisher query, uh, whose number is at most Q, or increased by a path that is triggered by the outer detect zone, and which, which number is also upper bounded by Q. And therefore, there are at most two Q-defined queries in positions five and six. So at most four Q squared path can be triggered by the middle detect zone. So this is the uh, termination argument of our simulator. Uh, so how to get down to eight rounds? Uh, to do this, we have to uh, rearrange the detect and adapt zones. Uh, so uh, we can see the outer detect zone has four rounds, which is obviously very wasteful. So we split it into two outer detect zones, each consisting of three rounds. And this makes triggering a path easier, but this does not uh, ruin our termination argument, since it is still hard to trigger the outer detect zone without knowing the permutation query. And we also have to move our adapt zones. So one of them is moved to uh, the middle, which overlaps the middle detect zone. And this uh, will create a problem that uh, the adaptive queries are actually uh, very likely to trigger a new path. Uh, if the middle detect zone is still uh, length two. And well, we, we don't want uh, this. Uh, I mean, in the 10 round simulator, the adapt zone is disjoint with uh, detect zone. So adapted queries are not triggering any path. So to keep this property, we will extend the middle detect zone into two three round middle detect zones. And this uh, will prevent uh, that from happening. So uh, this is what the simulator looks like. Uh, the red ones are the adapt zones, and the green ones are the detect zones. So uh, as we can see in this graph, uh, it's very symmetric. And each position triggers exactly one type of path. And moreover, uh, we can see here uh, the middle uh, adapt zone is actually surrounded by two uh, queries. And we claim that these two queries will be undefined when these two queries are adapted. Uh, so uh, this will prevent, uh, well, 
this will prevent uh, the two adaptive queries to form uh, to fill the middle detect zone of some path. Uh, okay, uh, so <coughs> a summarize of our A round simulator. It uses the same LIFO order as the 10 round simulator and it has four detect zones and it uses the same termination argument. Uh, so uh, what to do next? Uh, so we only have an attack against five round FISTO and we now we have a proof for eight round FISTO. So to close the gap, we, uh, there are still two rounds. Uh, and can we do uh, more rounds to improve concrete security? Uh, as we mentioned, uh, our proof achieves very uh, bad uh, security bound. And this is because we are aiming at uh, reducing the number of rounds. So uh, can we prove a better bound if we use more rounds, or even better prove the birthday bound for, say, uh, 20 round FISO? And moreover, uh, we can consider alternative constructions, uh, like uh, stop shuffle, uh, et cetera. Uh, can we prove indifferentiability bounds and better bounds for these constructions? Uh, okay, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much.